That's what killed Jed Stone, so it sure ain't hard to guess who did it. Sure ain't. That's right, Harris. It's a cinch white men don't shoot arrows around here. Of course not, Crane. Now we know the Indians have been in on this raiding and rustling. It's cold-blooded murder, and that's the proof of it. Tell you men we've got to stop it. What do you think we ought to do about it? You know as well as I do, Barnett, there's only one way to stop it. The soldiers claim they can't do anything unless they catch the varmints at it. So it's up to us to ride out there and clean them out. Every last Indian on that reservation. That's right. I'm afraid I don't go along with you on that, Harris. You're just guessing about it being reservation Indians. We're not guessing this time, Randall. We just pulled this out of Jed Stone's chest. Now, are you still saying it ain't Indian work? Oh, it's Indian, all right. There's nothing to prove that this came from the reservation. Where else are there any Indians around here? Well, there's plenty of outlaws hiding out in these hills. Might be a few renegade Indians, too. Now you're guessing. A man's been killed by an Indian. And we know there's Indians on the reservation. That's enough to go on. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Let's get over there with a posse Wait right a now. minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Kill. You start something like that, it'll be nothing but trouble for all of us. We can handle this business without any advice from an Indian lover, Randall. Nobody asked you to butt in. I've got as much at stake as anybody, Crane. I live in this valley, too. That makes it my business. Maybe so. But we're having our own meeting here. And we didn't ask you to come in on it. So suppose you move out right now. Suppose I don't feel like moving out, Crane. I can fix that, too. <laughs> trying to run things around here. But we won't get anywhere by rounding up the Indians with a posse. We've got to do something about it, Jerry. Yes, I know. Look, I'll go out to the reservation this afternoon and have a talk with the chief. I'm sure I can find out whether any of his people are mixed up in these raids. And if they are? Then we'll figure out what to do about it. Well, you folks gonna let it ride at that? Yeah, well, I reckon we'd better wait and see what Randall can find out. See you later. Come on, to the office. I'll fix you up. That Randall was tougher than I figured. He made a good try, but he's a lot of man to handle. He can make a deal of trouble for us. I'll say he can. That guess about renegade Indians in the hills was too close. I'll say it was. We'll have to keep on using them. Them and the outlaws. A few more attacks and the ranchers will be so mad Randall or nobody will be able to stop them. It'll run the Indians off of the reservation and it'll be open for settlement. And I can get the land I want. Seems like an awful hard way to get just another chunk of land. It's not just... Never mind about that. I'm paying you and I know what I'm doing. I ain't a kicking. But it might not work. There's no telling what Randall will find out from the chief this afternoon. Yeah. Just how many of the reservation Indians can we count on? Well, of course, Tosco's in it as deep as we are. And a few of the wilder bucks will stick as long as they get paid enough. But we'll never get anywhere with the chief. And most of the tribe will stick by him. Then we'd better get to the chief before Randall shows up there. You can't kill him. Of course not. But maybe we can fix it so the chief would like to see Randall killed. Get a hold of Tosco. This is where he can really earn his money. Hi, 
Jerry. Come on in. All right, Nancy. Say, I just ran into a situation in town, and I thought you might be able to help me out. What is it? Well, Crane and Harris and some of the other hotheads are trying to form a posse, clean out the reservation Indians. I've talked them into holding off a bit. Well, I'm glad you did, Jerry. I taught the reservation school for three years. I know these people. Oh, a few of them get into trouble once in a while, but most of them are as peaceful as we are. Well, that's the way I figured it, too. But you can't blame the ranchers, Nancy. There have been Indian raids, and it's only natural for the reservation tribes to be suspected. The only answer is to find out who's really doing it. But how? <laughs> I don't know. Go out to the reservation, look around, ask some questions, see what we can find out will do for a starter. You know the chief pretty well, don't you? Probably as well as anyone. He's never been really friendly to any white person. I'm sure he's honest, though, and intelligent. That's the feeling I get from him. But I want to have a little talk with him, and I thought if you went along, it might help. I'd be glad to. Saddle my horse while I get ready, will you? Sure. Good morning, Chief. We come to talk to you. We want to find out who's causing the trouble between your people and ours. We come as friends. They come as spies. It is as I told you, the white men talk of attacking our village. That is not true. We come only as friends. You lie. Among our people, when one brave says another speak with crooked tongue, they fight. The great spirit puts strength in the arm of one who speaks truth. White men say Tusco lie. Tusco say white men lie. Let knife say who speak truth. Or is white man afraid? If the Great Spirit makes my arm the stronger, will you listen to me then? I will listen. Must I kill this man to prove I'm a friend? No. Now may Miss Cooper and I talk to you alone? Here she comes. The first thing we must know, Chief, is whether any of your men were in these raids. I cannot be sure. The older warriors, most of the others, no. But the younger men, Pasco and a few more, they're often gone from the village. But there have been many Indians on some of these raids. They couldn't all have been your people, could they? No. Plenty of bad Indians from many tribes live in the hills with the white outlaws. That's what I told the ranchers. But proving the renegades are the raiders is something else again. It's going to take time. And your people, all of them, are going to have to stay in the village until it is proved. I cannot tell my people they must stay in the village because you say so. They trust no white man. Chief, don't your people believe that the spirit of an old friend can come back and help them in time of trouble? Our tribe has such legends of help given us over many generations. Suppose someone your people knew as a friend who lived long ago was to suddenly live again. 
Would your young men listen to his counsel? Would you help me relive one of the ancient legends of your tribe? To help bring peace between your people and mine? I've taught your children, Chief. You know I wouldn't lie. You can trust Jerry. When the white man first came to our country, we sold them land to settle. And we lived in peace. Then evil white men came and wanted more land. And when we fought them, we were called hostile. There was no justice. But then a white friend came to help us. Because his own people would have turned against him. He wore a mask. And he fought the evildoers among the Indians and among the whites. He was respected by all. And at last they listened to his counsel. The bad men were punished. And there was peace. Yes. My people remember. Helatigo. Helatigo. Good if he would come again to us. The Latigo shall return to your people. Latigo. Spirit of El Latigo has returned to his friends in their time of trouble. We welcome you, El Latigo. I am here to help you as I did your forefathers in the old days. I will be on watch to protect you against evil white men. But I give you warning. None of you are to listen to bad counsel that will set you against the white men. Stay near your village and no harm will come to you. Obey me and I will protect you. Disobey me and my vengeance will strike you down. Alatigo's spirit has returned to fight the evildoers among the white men and among our own people. Only if we listen to his counsel will there again be peace in the land. We will listen to his counsel. in town tonight, told the ranchers the chief promised to keep his braves on the reservation. Sold them on the idea it must be a renegades causing the trouble around here. There is trouble at the reservation, too. Young braves not want to work for you anymore. They have to. Crane has the outlaw Indians set to raid that road building camp tomorrow. We must have some of your people along so we can make a liar out of Randall. What's the matter with them? I'll have to go. I'll have to go. El Latigo? That's Spanish for the whip. What's the whip got to do with it? El Latigo is ancient spirit, the friend of our tribe. He has come back to want us to keep peace. And you believe that, bunk? Other young braves do. Then you get back there right now and talk him out of it. I will try. Maybe one or two will follow me. Well, it sounds like you really made an impression. 
<laughs> I'd say so. Lucky I was able to find these clothes and that they fit. The way the chief and the others look, I must be a dead ringer for their El go. That's fine, Jerry. Are you going into the hills after the renegades? Well, it'll have to be done sooner or later. But right now, I'm going to patrol the boundaries of the reservation. I want to make sure the young bucks are staying in the village. I'll see you later, Nancy. All right, Jerry. Bye. Bye. You know me? The next time it'll be in here unless you tell me where you're going. To meet outlaw Indians. Or well, they will raid camp of men who build roads. To attack road camp when? Today. Soon. Go back to your village. Your chief will settle with you later. attack the road camp. Ride to the telegraph office and call the army post. I'm heading for the camp. Sent for the cavalry and they're on their way. Good, we can use some help. An Indian sneaked into this wagon. 